Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Richard Lewis Show. I'm Richard Lewis. This guy loitering, mouth breathing in the background is Sam. How are you doing, Sam? Sound. Sam. <laughs> Definitely hasn't just done a massive bong hit before the show. No, it's just every every show you ask me on, I never have an answer. So it's Yeah, I know. So. Like, could you could you phone it in and just yeah, like try? Next time I will time? think one. I think we'll get answer right, next to the show. Right. Well, well, you know, I'm waiting with dated <laughs> So anyway, I'm excited about this show uh, for a lot of reasons. But the main one is, Sam, we've got a sponsor. Yeah, I did my job. Yeah. I earned that 50%. Come on, mate. Yeah, well done. Well done. And obviously, you know, we, we've got an Audible affiliate thing, but we haven't been able to, uh, you know, do a lot sponsors-wise because there's all these, you know, rules and regulations. And we want to do kind of different sponsors to what everyone else. So it's been a bit of a grind. But we got approached by – well, you should tell this story because you, you handle that side of the business. Yeah, so Podbean has its own, like, built-in advertising thing. Mm. But the thing is, it only takes in the views for what you get on Podbean. So it was, like, useless for us because we never used it. But I did see one guy on there who was advertising this book. So I e- – no, I reached out to him on Twitter, actually. That's when he DM'd me, and that's how I, uh, I started this conversation. Right, well, we, we, we've actually got a, a sponsor uh, who's written a book – and we're really psyched about it. Uh, it's a chap called Andrew Bouchard, or Bouchard, and uh, he's written a book called The Seduction of Anita Sarkeesian, who we all know and love, uh, the wonderful feminist icon. Uh, you'll know her from uh, the uh, Tropes Women video game series thing that she does, and generally just moaning about the patriarchy and Gamergate and bickering with people and you know uh anyway uh she's it's not really about her the book is but this this plug isn't and anyway look we i'm gonna read you the plot of this book called the seduction of anita sarkeesian this is the blurb uh and it's eight i've got to stress as well this is 18 plus right this is a book for adults yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. is that true yeah yeah, 18 plus good that's what it says here on the on the sheet I've got in front of me. So this is the blurb, right? A babe. <laughs> I'm already going, man. I'm already going. <laughs> right, here we go. Here we go. <sighs> Deep, right. A babe named Anita Sarkeesian crusades to purify video games. <laughs> But she discovers a maverick named Frelson. <laughs> who is... <laughs> who is also discovering her. Oh, this is so odd. Right, Frelson thinks... <laughs> Frelson thinks she is hot and stylish. Frelson challenges Anita's worldview in ways she never imagined. He entices her. Yet she feels conflicted. Will Frelson succeed in his quest to seduce Anita and to transform her into a maverick? Read this erotic romance novella to find out. Now, i got to say, Sam, the, the, the plot of this book sounds a little bit off the wall. Yeah. You, you talked so to obviously that bio was on the sponsor thing, so obviously I'm a, I was already 100% in as <laughs> soon as I read that. Yeah, of course. Like, if you sent... Like, obviously, this is definitely the kind of sponsor we want. I haven't been this excited for a potential sponsor. Uh, apart from that time, we had that Disney dating website. Yeah, I know. And they said they wanted to do it as well, but he just didn't have money. <sighs> I was going to say the it? website, but I'm not. Nah, let's wait. Maybe you'll get the budget in. No, but like, what if, what if we just shave the numbers down? Just do it for 50 quid or something? Uh, I could. Like, he just begged yeah. for pennies. Yeah, just do it for just do it for whatever he's got, cause like that's a Disney dating website, mate. That's fucking big. <laughs> this is game changing. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, just think it'll open up a whole new world of dating. We could we could do shit with them. We could we could anyway. Back to uh, the seduction of Anita Sarkeesian. So basically, it's about a dude uh, who wants to seduce Anita Sarkeesian. Now, when you talk to Mister Bouchard about this. Did you get the impression that it was maybe semi autobiographical in some way? Uh, I, maybe because the Maverick reference. I'm sure he described himself as like a 
he's into maverick poli- uh, politics. I don't know what that is. Interesting. So maybe I think that's what he means by turning into a maverick. Well, well, look, um, what we want to draw your attention to. Look, I'll tell you what, before I even tell you where to go and buy the book, let me read you a bit of the book. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Give him a do taste. it that way. Give him a taste. It's funny you should use the word taste. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to read you chapter 22. Now, the chapters aren't long, by the way. So if you, if you just want a quick read. Yeah, it's 106 pages tall. Yep. It's uh, it, it's it's definitely one of those books that you can read while you're traveling, or you know, just jerking off, sleep, jerking off maybe. <laughs> I'm glad, glad you said that. So I throw it. Uh, yeah, why not? Right. Anyway, this is uh, chapter twenty-two. You know what this feminist woman? This is um from the viewpoint of Anita Sarkeesian. You know what this feminist woman loves? Cunnilingus. Add <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. Add me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. You know what this feminist woman loves? Cunnilingus. It satisfies me even when John performs it on me. Now, I presume in this, this is John McIntosh, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's the, the guy who helps with the script. So. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I, I, I should add, this is obviously fiction. Um, yeah, did did not. <laughs> yeah, did, did Matt's, the book definitely. <laughs> none of this happens. It's a didn't happen book. I just know it can get even better yet. Maybe when a real man comes along, I can experience it in its fullest glory. Do other feminists enjoy cunnilingus? Should I care? Even if they don't, I do enjoy it. If I was the poem writing type, I would write a poem about Cunnilingus. It deserves that honor. Nah. <laughs> Random nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Abby, nah. If I was the poem writing type, I would write a poem about feminism. Maybe I could keep the poem about Cunnilingus to myself and share the poem about feminism to the world. Cunnilingus. Sounds a bit too much like cunt. <laughs> only fifty percent, like it's not that similar. It's only just chill, two. just chill. Well, obviously they've got the same etymology, you know, the same roots. Yeah, I imagine. Anyway, they used to be called a cunny, right? Back in the olden days, maybe. Yeah, De- definitely was. <laughs> I don't know. I went live. <laughs> Definitely weren't eating puss, mate, when I was <laughs> negative 400 years old. <laughs> True. Good. Good. Uh, Cunnilingus Good. sounds a bit too much like cunt. You shouldn't slander a vagina by calling it a cunt. I don't know. I just don't know. Maybe I should sing a song. Maybe I should write a story. Maybe I should somehow incorporate these thoughts into a YouTube gaming commentary video. Am I rambling? Should feminists ramble? I have the right to ramble. You can ramble too, just as long as you let me ramble. So what were we talking about again? Oh yeah, cunnilingus. <laughs> That's the full chapter, mate. What a beaut. So, anyway, uh, we'll go to the Amazon page. You can hit me with that link, actually. I haven't, I haven't got it in front of me. Right. And, and just to show you that this is legit, because I know some people are going to be thinking this is a bit... They're not really sponsored, right? We're definitely sponsored. Yeah. This is real. Actually this, happened. This did happen. This is a thing that happened. Um... <laughs> I forgot about the cover. Oh, <laughs> oh, the cover. Oh, That's on the overlay as well, mate. Oh, the, the cover brilliant. is. That's a little square brilliant. version. Brilliant, mate. Uh, the fuck of the aspect oh. ratio a bit like to her legs are a bit stretched out <laughs> but she's on her. That's how Frelson likes it. <laughs> so anyway, you can go and get this on uh, the Amazon uh, The like Amazon. Page. <laughs> the Amazon. You can go to the Amazon. <laughs> so you, you can f- use the browser. Yeah, oh, on the internet. I was going to say on the Amazon page, but that doesn't make any sense. Well, the link to go get to it Amazon. Is yeah, you can get, is... right. And, and we've got a ref- there's a referral link. Well, it's not a referral link. It's just I made it because it's easier. All oh, right, okay. 
to give out. And it's rlewisreports.com forward slash T-S-A-S. T-S-A, and obviously that stands for the um, seduction of Anita Sarkeesian. Um, now, it's £4.90 if you want a copy of this in paperback. Uh, have you got, is this up on screen now, the cover? Yeah. Like, she's just having a strum, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just got a cover of someone who looks like an Eta Sarkeesian just having a fiddle. Like. <laughs> it's true with himself. Well, not himself. Probably someone else drew it, I assume. I don't know. We'll have to ask him. Ask him. Or you can uh, get it on uh, Kindle for £1.40. And we'd be super happy if you went out and got a copy of or it. Or you can also use our Audible link and then get it for free with your Audible link. Hang on. Don't, isn't that fucking... What no, does he no get? it's a trial. Yeah, he still gets his money. All right, all it's right. It's free trial. All right, good, good. Yeah, you could do that. There you go. Double money, double payday. So, but, I, but like, so anyway, I'll, I'll show you some of the reviews uh, that this has had. Uh, this is perhaps my favorite. There's a the top customer review. <laughs> <It's> three stars. <laughs> I never heard them before. <laughs> I never knew those were there. Did you know they were there? <laughs> did you know that corner was actually there? Because I didn't. As if we were keeping our own secret. As if we didn't bring that up. <laughs> so. Oh, right, so. Uh, the top the top review is just needs more cock. <laughs> <laughs> But um, you can see there's some five-star reviews in there as well. This book makes my cat wet. Um, every page was like a sneak peek into Anita's life like the NSA. Uh, this is one of the best romance novels I have read in a long time. So I was laughing and crying throughout the whole thing. Highly recommended. So um, you've, heard an extract, you've heard an extract of me reading it. But there's there also as well, because there's an audio book version available, you can get the audio download. Uh, there's there's an extract from the audio, um, which w- we can play that, right? Yeah. 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 Shall, I, shall I leave our sound up? Well, you won't be able to hear it, so... Yeah, just you just play it. All right, okay. 66. Anita. After our last session, I just had to have more. I fear I'm too aggressive. Maybe it's the feminism I'm expelling from my system. Whatever it is, it sure makes me horny. The next time I meet him, I felt like I was going to burst, as he gave me more maverick wisdom. Don't get me wrong. I love the wisdom and deeply appreciate it. Just sometimes a woman gets so horny, she feels like she's going to explode, if you know what I mean. So, once he finished, I asked for permission to make a move on him, and fortunately he accepted. I made sure he placed his hands not only on my formerly feminist rack, but also on my formerly feminist pussy. It made me feel like I'd never felt before, even during the most arousing moments of femdom with John. Sound. So definitely uh, pick up a copy. and uh, feminist pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Is that? That isn't a person reading. No, it? I think it's a text speech program. <laughs> Right, Former right, feminist good. pussy. Right, good. Um, good. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, <laughs> definitely pick up a copy of that. And uh, I think for the agreement, we're going to have uh, the logo and a link and everything on the overlay for the next three videos uh, that I record, apart from ones that I've already recorded and queued up. Um, so keep an eye out for them. Uh, and thanks for supporting our sponsors who, who indeed support us uh, in making this awesome content. Um, and, and certainly I've got the full book uh, in front of me and I can tell you it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite the experience. It's a blast. So good job, Sam. Thank well you. done. Well done, mate. You actually did it. You actually went out and got a sponsor. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> Brilliant. Fuck you now. <laughs> right. So, also, you've been busy, mate. You've been real busy. Because oh, uh, it seems that you've been in America. I didn't know you'd been in America. Uh, or I didn't know I had been. Yeah, because of this. 
you uh, engaged in a little bit of a uh, New Year's Eve, Eve prank, it seems. Because somebody changed the Hollywood sign to say Hollyweed. <laughs> <laughs> that is the level of shit. I thought humor. there was supposed to be, like, security on that shit, but you could just it, walk so, up to mate, the Hollywood this happened sign. Ten, this happened ten years ago as well. It's not the first time it's been Hollyweed. <laughs> But that's legit. I thought, oh, this is a fucking troll. Like, this is like, they've changed April Fool's Day finally. Like, especially because it was like Tommy fucking Chong, who, who I saw <laughs> tweeted out, right? So I was like, no, nah, this is this is legit. This actually happened. So some guy went up and just did it himself, apparently. Like, like, yeah, they said on up CCTV is just one guy with yeah, fucking just one flags block. and shit. One bloke did this. He went up there at 3 a.m. and thought, I'm just going to make this sign say Holly Weed. <laughs> <laughs> what a mess. What a mess. Like, but good, fair play. It was, it was, I believe, what they call in the business classic banter. A goof. Mm. So, all right, let's get into uh, some uh, serious stuff. What's well, serious uh, stuff? Oh, no, fuck that, actually. Let's put Christmas to bed. Because obviously this is like, you know, it's the new year now and there was still some stuff over Christmas. Uh, I, I wanted, I thought this stuff would tickle you. First of all, on my Facebook feed, one of my old mates who I used to work with, Mickey McGee, he had a very, I was like scrolling through on my phone and that he just had a status and it just said, nothing says Christmas more than the Pope kissing baby Jesus on the dick. <laughs> and I thought, He's gone fucking mad. He's lost it, mate. He's lost the fucking plot. Then, turns out, that happened. That actually Did happened. Happen. Did happen. What, what's going on in this photo, mate? I don't know. I thought it might be fake at first, but I guess no, it's, it's just real. <laughs> but, like, what, what possible context... There's nothing in Catholicism, is there, where you have to kiss Jesus on the dick? I don't remember that. I don't no. don't remember that at all. The only time I've ever heard of anything like that is with Jews, because when they used to circumcise, they used to the rabbis oh, to suck yeah, the blood yeah. out. Yeah, well, actually, take the what, what they call the schmuck off, I think. Fucking hell. Yeah, I did hear about that. Is that what he's doing? <laughs> I don't know, but he's not even Jewish. And he's not circumcising a fake baby, is he? Yeah, but I mean, you know, they say uh, Jesus obviously would you know be that part of the world, right? <laughs> He'd have had it off. Probably, yeah. Yeah, he'll have been cut. So, but in fact, actually, no, I read about this. There was um, there's a church, there's a church, mate. Uh, the Church of Jesus's foreskin. What? <laughs> Check this. This is legit. Uh, gotta find this now. Church, Jesus's foreskin. Uh, here you go. The holy, uh, I can't even pronounce that. Prepuce? Is that how they say it? Prepuce? But look, a number of churches in Europe have claimed to possess Jesus' foreskin. So here you go. Look, they pass it round. They all take it in turns, mate, to have a go on fucking. Have a go? Yeah, we'll have a go at having the holy foreskin, mate. Look at that. <laughs> There's even a picture there, look. I know, look at the mad look. knife and the tiny <laughs> little pedic. Look, look, like. look at that, man. What are you on about? You'd be happy with that, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> that isn't it. even in proportion for a baby. Like, they've got it like a quarter <laughs> of a fingernail. What is that? What is that? Run a bean dick, like, straight run a bean dick. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben, Nicola, <laughs> Uncle Ben's minute race. <laughs> the extra spicy one in front of my girl. Holy shit! Oh. I hope he's got steady hands. Like, <laughs> can't do a thing off one swipe, yeah, man. All shaft, like he's gone. He's lost his entire oh. schlong. Yeah, that's ridiculous, isn't it? Why would you make Jesus have such a small knob? <laughs> no, not... Look at the Jesus full staring the cameraman out as well. He's the son of God, like. Staring the guy drawing him like, what the fuck yeah, are you doing, you pedo? Well, he's like, 
For fuck's sake. I can't wait till Stinson catches you on fucking pedo busters. <laughs> 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 like... That's unreal. But anyway, yeah, this is the church, Some... of the church of the Holy Foreskin or something. Truly Ooh. Foreskin doesn't preserve that well. Well, I don't know. It's like when they dig up their mummies and that, isn't it? Yeah, but they're, aren't they just... Ah, yeah, but they're wrapped in shit then. I don't know. Yeah, they probably put it in some vinegar. <laughs> Pickled <laughs> foreskin. <laughs> and it on a whelk. He's pork scratching his off. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't got hairs growing out of it. Cut it off too young. This has got this has gone off the rails already, man. <laughs> yeah, so the Pope that was a crazy photo and it got me thinking about like, you know, what were the other photos that were like funny over Christmas, you know, like because one of the things I used to like about living up in the northeast was that you'd get these like uh, you know Viz magazine, obviously. Yeah. You've seen Viz, right? Mm-hmm. Uh they used to do like shit Christmas stuff. It used to be fucking hilarious. And I think they even did um, a book, like the Book of Shit Towns or something. <clears throat> <laughs> and it's just so quintessentially British, you know. So I was, like, looking to try and find um, just some examples of this, just to please myself, you know, because I've been in America. And obviously, like, I've missed that sort of shitness yeah. of the British Christmas. So I was having a look. And uh, hang on. I got the fucking, I got the mayor. I was having a look, and I actually managed to find, like, I think it was on The Guardian. Uh, Yeah, it was. And they basically had collated, like, some of the most underwhelming Christmas photos, right? (laughs) Which just sums up Britain in a nutshell. So here you go, mate. I'll put it under the picture of uh, Jesus having his knob. (laughs) Right, so just ignore the top one, because that's just a tree just fell over. You know what I mean? It's not, not really all that, right? Then just scroll down, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> the se- sure. Tottenham Hill. Just the second picture, man. Just look at that <laughs> shit tree. <laughs> why is it just in, like, a park? Yeah, why Why would or you even bother with that? Like, look at it. <laughs> Wrapped in barbed wire. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolute garbage. Um, then you go to Croydon. This was good. Look at that. Sound. Christmas cheers. <laughs> it's just all fucking... <laughs> tarpaulin and dead bodies and that that has to be the best this is from copenhagen <laughs> right you associate them with me what the f- who's done that <laughs> and why have you bothered like, the m- fucking moles in the ground have had a christmas tree but... <laughs> and then hang on not the next one in steve image that's pretty shit as well but like oh hang on go down to this one like uh so kingston hospital Right, decided to try to get in on it. <laughs> Fucking syringes and rubber gloves, like so. All views, of course. I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> if that was Port Talbot, that would fit right in. That'd actually be useful. Just get on the brown. Uh, <laughs> get down. Then there was this. Look at this. A crustacean. Someone's just took a lobster, <laughs> giant lobster, and just put a Santa's costume. <laughs> that was pretty shit. Because of how dirty and moist the Santa <laughs> costume is, well, it's just literally dragged through a fucking puddle. Oh, can you be asked? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one as well. Like, seeing this, like, so let's just uh, just scroll down to this. Just a lovely, like, you know, child's diorama, kids ice skating, Frosty the Snowman's watching on. Massive skip. <laughs> <laughs> like, just full of shit. <laughs> the fucking, there you go. Fuck your Christmas. Um, this, I, li- I like this one here, if you scroll down to what, the one called Office Cheer. So not the underwhelming Office Christmas, but the second yeah. one. That is the shittest tree <laughs> I have ever fucking seen. Look at that. It's, it hasn't even got any leaves. It's, it's barely got LED branches. Lights. <laughs> just lights. Who's fucking bothered with that? It's unreal. And then this, the, the last one we'll look at. This is fucking unreal. Pound Wonderland, mate. <laughs> the Christmas pound shop. It's Bigsy and Bagsy's fucking second business, mate. For a pound. Christmas for a pound. Everyone get a pound. Soul to the man <laughs> with a shiny pound. Christmas. 
Uh, imagine what fucking garbage they're selling in there, mate. Yeah, no, are they just open all year with only Christmas stuff, or do they, like, rebrand after a couple of months? I don't know. Around where I used to live, they used to have these stores, right? Like, And they were, like, firework shops. Yeah. But, like, what, you know, think about that for a fucking business plan. Yeah. If it ain't right, November so The only time fireworks. people buy fireworks, generally at the end of the year, you know, you've got November, you've got Christmas and New Year's, and the rest of the year you're just struggling to eat. I'm going to get a shot with a grand a month's rent for no reason. Yeah. Nine months out of the year, I'm shivering in the store I'm renting, begging for death. We're all on November and it's fucking all good times. Like, and I'm all oh. out of Catherine wheels. <laughs> yeah, is there <laughs> Who fucking does that? And like, okay, <laughs> right, occasionally, like, what would happen is you would see, like, they would sell other things, like, randomly, like, you know. Pokemon cards and shit, like, or no Yeah, way. just garbage, like, just lift shit. I just felt like, you know, Full go in garbage. there in, like, March, you know what I mean? Well, what's going on in it? Fucking hell. Yeah, we just got this new consignment of Billy Bassmouth fucking <laughs> singing fish. Brilliant. I have yeah. one of those, isn't it? Yeah, I'll have them for a pound. Please, <laughs> please, I need this. November's so far away. <laughs> yeah, pound one, man. Anyway, fuck it. Let's actually talk about some new. Oh, right, we, we have some banter on this show, Sam. <laughs> you have some laughs. Right, here you go. This will cheer you up. Uh, Australia. Right? Uh, and I'll, You know my view on landlords, yeah? I mean, uh, you've you've uh, never left home, have you? Yeah, well, yeah. I lived, well, I lived in a land of three months. That Not quite the same. Not quite the same, man. But you've never paid rent or dealt with a landlord. Oh, yeah, I did. I had to pay rent when I went to Atlanta. Right. Oh, yeah, no, you did. You're right, I remember. Yeah. I remember sleeping on the floor when Alfred first came out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember saying to you, uh, like, as we was drifting in and out of consciousness, I'm going to be on TV, Sam, <laughs> and I'm sleeping on your floor. <laughs> in that place. Yeah, that was good times. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so, like, generally, in my experience, landlords are cunts. You know? Like, every time... Uh, they can work an angle, they'll work the fucking angle, you know? The rent has to go up for some reason. You never get your deposit back. They, they don't have a reasonable grasp of what wear and tear is, you know? Like, when you when you move in, is what, like, you, you know, obviously something's going to happen. There's going to be a few spills here. There's going to be, you know, a little bit of buffing on the paint and that. Shouldn't come out of my end. If I live in a fuck, as long as I'm not kicking fucking holes in the wall, you know, I should get that full deposit back. It's there for damages. It's not there for reasonable wear and tear. But they always work the fucking angle. And, you know, every time something goes wrong in the house and you ring them up and you say, look, me fucking boiler's broke, uh, pipes are burst, I'm going to call somebody. Ah, the, I've got a guy for that. Yeah, yeah, that has to go through me because I've got a guy for that. And you always get some fucking cowboy builder, like just some absolute cunt. Just come round, like, you know what I mean? Like, obviously he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, but, you know, he knows Brickly how to put... put new electrics in, like... Yeah, <laughs> no, just a nightmare, like, just a nightmare. So, yeah, I had that in my last gaff in Birmingham, even then. And, uh, so anyway, you know, I'm not really a fan of landlords, but this has given me a fresh perspective. This was a story from Australia. I was going to save this for I Hate It Here, but it's too good, mate. And I knew this show was going to be stupid. So, here you go. This is from Australia, Melbourne, right? A landlord has put a coin-operated toilet in the house of one of his tenants. So, every time you want to flush, you have to put a dollar in. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, right? Now, get this. He said to the tenants that it was part of a government incentive to save water. But he was coming around and collecting the money. <laughs> government said well, to. Yeah. Weren't going to the fucking government, was it? So they had to as well, because do dollar coins, think about that, like the dollar coin. It's not like, you know, so you have to keep coins. And if you have guests <laughs> over... You the shit. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing as well, obviously... You get caught into the whole fucking 
if it's uh, yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Yeah. Way of living, you know? No one wants to be like, living where you're shitting on and piss. Even, yeah, and even then. <laughs> Um, you know, do, do you do you double up on the dumps? Fucking hell! It's a dollar a flush, mate. <sighs> I'd have to. Pay Let's you. say you just do a little one. Let's say it's just one of those ones where you've just had a cup of coffee in the morning, and you feel it. You know, it's just oh, having a tent, <laughs> and you go, and it's just a few little plop, plop, plop. You just, you know, rabbit pellets. Yeah, and you're like. You know, it wasn't. It's not worth a dollar. That <laughs> not worth a flush. That's yeah. That's not Barely a dollar's worth. worth of shit. That's not a dollar's worth of shit. So maybe you let it st- stay in there. Just keep the lid down. You go back and you unleash hell later on. You know. <laughs> but um, but I couldn't believe this. Um, so they took it. They took it on social media. They took it on to to Reddit, and um, it is. And people were saying that this is like highly illegal. Because obviously it, it fucking it has to be, <laughs> it has to be right. So I I I cannot believe the fucking goal of a landlord to try that stuff. That's fucking unreal, mate. So right, is is something uh, that I also couldn't believe. Let's go with this. Right now, you know that, uh, and I, I'm surprised that this got announced. Um, because I knew there were an item. I thought it was a terrible uh, secret. But obviously, you know the co-founder of Reddit, Alexis Ohanian, mm-hmm. and uh, Serena Williams. Mm-hmm. Well, they've been an item for ages. Yeah. It, now, they uh, they did a, she did a weird post about their, like, getting engaged. And she did, like, a little sort of poem thing. And it was a front page Reddit post. Which, you know, whatever, I think that's pathetic. But, uh, you know, what? who am I to judge, right? Be happy, you know? And, yeah, whatever, you know? I don't like Reddit. But Serena Williams is a fucking baller. I've got respect for uh, accomplishments as an athlete. Alexis Ohanian seems like one of the more normal ones in Reddit. Normal, uh, you know, still fuck Reddit and everyone involved with it. But So... In the aftermath of this announcement, mate, there was like loads of articles saying we lost one. And I'm like, what? What? What do you mean? So I clicked on a few of these links. And apparently, in the liberal media and vlogosphere and blogosphere, it's now okay to say black. And white people shouldn't congregate because cause white people are evil. So we should stick to our own. Which, again, I might be wrong here, but I thought one of the whole, po- well, one of the major points of the civil rights movement was to normalize interracial relationships. But it's, it, it's, Going the other way now, mate. Yeah, fair, fair, mate. Come on. You gotta push back. <laughs> Swings around the boat. Right, anyway. So I've, I've picked out, I've deliberately picked out the most ridiculous, but there was a few of these, mate. Yeah, I, I saw could've, one as well. Yeah, I could have picked out any of them. I mean, feel free to go grab another one if you want, just in case people think, oh, you always do this, Richard. You cherry pick it. You ch- obviously, that's the whole fucking point of the show, by the way. How stupid do you have to be? Yeah, you know what? We're going to show every article about every topic. Yeah. We you just cherry pick it. Yeah. Well, okay. I will. I will do a summary of the whole of the mainstream media. Every topic that day that I decide to record something. Obviously, I cherry pick out the most ridiculous stuff. That's what we're laughing at. That's the comedy. Fucking idiot. Right, <laughs> Buy that book, The Seduction of Anita Sarkeesian. Buy that book. You fucking idiots. Now buy that book. So. Check this, right? We lost another one. Serena Hottentot Williams is engaged, and he's white. <gasps> Tagline to the article by Melanie Hill over at the Urban Twist. The fact that white men have lusted after and when not offered, taken the body of black women for centuries is sickening. The idea that a black woman would voluntarily lie down with one is mind-blowing. 
Right. Now, uh, uh, there's so many unreal lines in this uh, article. Um, so let's get to it. Um, here you go. I, th I think I'm as liberal as the next. <laughs> but you ain't, though. Are you, though? Because you're a bad racist, though. <laughs> I, I think I'm as liberal as the next. And while I recognize that we would not have had our first biracial president if there weren't people who dated outside of the black race, I don't like it. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> In just two days, it'll be 2017. And even though I'm current year. And even though I know I'm not supposed to say it in this day and age, it's true. Why lie? I'm one who believes desegregation and legalizing interracial marriage destroyed the black community. Yes, I Fuck said it. Up. Mad, didn't it? <laughs> how, how vitriolic and venomous is this? Right? The more I watch black men and women date and marry any race other than black, the more I want to cry. We now live in a society where it is commonplace to see mixed families, where history books are being rewritten to erase the brutality that was enacted upon Africans brought to America. We de definitely isn't happening. Yeah, no, definitely is, is, anyone, that. is anyone rewriting that? Nah, Who's rewriting that? Look to like more by new media, yeah. but sure. Yeah, right. We live in a society where little black babies are continuously being adopted by non-black parents who neglect their real history and heritage. I suppose the alternative's better, is it? <laughs> Not yet. I guess you're just going to be an orphan forever. Yeah, I mean, like Angelina Jolie. Yeah, well, you know, fuck it. Leave those kids to starve and die. Those kids are having a real shit life now. And they, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's teach them all about... What happened, you know, the white man's tyranny in Africa by letting them die in abject poverty. That'll fucking teach them a valuable lesson about culture and how evil white people are. I think it's all right to adopt them, actually. I much prefer that outcome. Many of today's blacks seem not to even understand the struggle their ancestors endured to make sure we were fairly treated in this country. And again, by the way, Martin Luther King would fucking spin in his fucking grave if he thought that there was legitimately black people that held this type of thought process. Um, let me get to this bit. That was a fucking mad bit down here. I mean, it, it gets a little bit conspiratorial. That's why I was like, holy fucking shit, is this a troll? People like the members of the Bilderberg group, please look them up. <laughs> have mastered the art of using movies, music, television, and social media to dumb the world down and desensitize you to things that should outrage you. The more we are bombarded with images of black men and women dying at the hand of white officers and civilians alike, the more they let the bodies lie in the street, reminiscent of strange fruit swinging from the trees in the south, the more the world looks at things as if they are normal. The more the news shows you savagery perpetrated by black Americans, you think black people are savages. The media does not highlight the same behavior from other ethnicity. Like, what's that got to do with two people just getting <laughs> in the kitchen? She's out to fucking lunch, man. She just plays tennis. <laughs> Calm down. Isn't it? It's unbelievable. So it goes on in similar vein. Uh... So, hang on, there was, there was a good little bit right towards the end. Uh, where was it? Uh... Oh, here you go, right? It's right, right at the end. This is unbelievable. Okay, hot and top Williams. You're happy when the joke's on you? Cool. You're okay with taking what should be generational black wealth and giving it back to the oppressor? Cool. You want to twerk for black men and marry white ones. Cool. You want to lie down with those who raped, beat, and separated your ancestors. Cool. Just don't ask for my support or respect. Signed, Conscious Black Woman. Pretty sure she didn't actually ask for any <laughs> of those things. I'm pretty sure she doesn't give a fuck who you are, whether you live or die. I'm pretty sure she just does not care in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Just don't ask for my respect. Didn't. Didn't go and fuck off, you lunatic. I'm all right, actually. That's unbelievable, isn't it? 
Yeah, mental as fuck. <laughs> mental as fuck. Like, and I, 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 I've got to say as well, I, I, I find it hard to believe that the people who write these articles are black. Because they always talk about twerking. Right? No. <laughs> we can all agree that black people have done more in the last 50 years than twerk, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. So why is it always twerking they bring up as like their big cultural landmark? It's and you black people bring this up, I mean. Now if you were to say to me, you know, hey, hey Richard, what do you think about black? I would never say twerking. You know, oh, what's black culture given to you then? Um, yeah, twerking. Twerking and uh, NWA. Yeah. yeah obviously, you both wouldn't say that. good, to be fair. Both up there. <laughs> I, I do like both. But the point is, you know, they always talk about twerking. I don't fucking get it. You want to twerk? Twerking's ours. White women shouldn't twerk. Protect the twerk. Come the fuck on, man. It's just shaking your ass. We've been doing that before we were human. Do you know what I mean? It's it's all linked in it to the mating rituals. Yeah. So it's fucking it unreal. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> just you, uh, it's just fucking unreal. <laughs> it is. <laughs> fucking twerking and that like. Twerking and that like. Yeah, <laughs> fucking unreal. I'm gonna give you a fucking twerk, mate. Um, there's a lot of black stuff in this uh, on this list actually. Uh, this episode, like it's, it's there's there's a thing or something. So we'll get this out the way. Um, right, you know how Donald Trump secretly hates black people, right? Yeah, I've been told. Yeah, yeah wants them all to die, of course, because he's racist and that. Loads of black friends and you know, done business with black people for decades. Uh, appointed a black person to his cabinet. Lives in New York. Almost. New York. Culture right, yeah. cities in the world. Racist, obviously. Racist as they come. A regular Enoch Powell. And uh, this is what I thought was interesting. Uh, there was a statistic that came out, obviously, as we moved into 2017, about the number of murders over in Chicago. And yeah, I won't be flippant about it. There is a reason why it gets called Chirac. You know, and we've seen the videos of people literally just fucking. You can just hear it. it sounds like it's the fucking, you know, 1999 New Year's Eve party every night. Just pop, 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 pop. But it ain't fireworks. It's gun crime, and it's horrific what's happened to Chicago. Uh, they ended the year with 762. Homicides, which is the most it's had in 20 years. And another record, 4,331 shooting victims in 2016. It is like the OK Corral over there right now. Now, it seems to me, because the, the majority of of the people that have been the victim of these shootings and murders, uh, people of color. So it seems to me, if you were racist, you would think this is a good thing. You would be like, "Hey, fucking great, jobs are good, and if we can get if we can get those numbers up a little bit, that'd be fantastic." But Donald Trump tweeted after this, saying, "The mayor of Chicago." should ask for federal help if you can't lower these numbers because they're ridiculous. And frankly, they are. That's horrifying that in America, a civilized country, you know, these numbers make you think that there's a civil war going on. There ain't. This is, this is, a, this is a major city in America. I've been to Chicago. It's a hell of a city. And yet, you've got all these fucking murders just happening par for the course. Absolutely incredible. Uh, keep in mind, in 2015, they had 485 murders, which was considered high, but they've jumped in a year from 485 to 762. So <clears throat> the point is, if Donald Trump, 
what he want, is tweeting about this and saying, look, ask for federal help. We're going to make it a priority. Doesn't that imply that he kind of cares about you know the lot of people of color in America? He doesn't want to see them get murdered? Nah. Probably not, right? Now, what I thought was interesting was the Daily Mail uh, mentioned – that um, you know, the day, a lot of people think the Daily Mail is a very right-leaning paper, but it still doesn't make them pro-Trump. The 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 loathing for Donald Trump still in the press, even now as the president-elect soon to be sworn in, is incredible. <clears throat> look what look at the opening line of this: Donald Trump used his Twitter bully pulpit on Monday to blast Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel for allowing his city city's murder and firearm shooting rates to spell out of control. His bully pulpit. Why, why, why is the opening line about how Donald Trump is a Twitter bully and not how fucking appalling these murder statistics are? D- don't you think the mayor of Chicago deserves some sort of criticism? That's fucked up, right? Yeah. Why are they fo- why are they focusing on Donald like this isn't a Trump story, really. The story should be about the statistics. But fair enough. Trump's saying, look, federal help, the government can fucking help you get this shit under control, but this shit has got to be got under control. But no. Even even in a paper like the Daily Mail, Donald Trump he's a bully. How dare he bully the mayor? Fuck. I, I don't even know what's going on anymore, Sam, mate. I, I, I can't figure it out. The whole world's gone mad. Testosterone-free zone, mate. Yep, it is uh, It, it, it is going to be a controlled substance soon. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, so you know what else has been driving people mad at the moment is uh, this book deal that Milo Yiannopoulos got, right? Yeah. Now, I thought this was hilarious. Because obviously, it's no secret. I used to work with Milo. It's no secret. I know Milo. It's no secret. I consider him a friend. Um, and I've been really pleased by all the success he's had. I certainly hope all of these uh, murmurings about the uh, bursary, the fund, the college fund he set up, and the money going missing, I certainly hope none of that's true and it's part of a smear job. Because certainly, you know, that... That would be a bit of a a bit disappointing, let's put it that way. And I'm I'm sure knowing the guy, it's an honest mistake, but you never know. And I'll keep an open mind and you know review the evidence. But still there's nothing too substantial right now. We just all we know is that the mis the, the money was there and it hasn't been paid out in a timely fashion that people could still potentially get it. And it could just be an example of disorganization, not inherent corruption or theft but let's not talk about that for now let's talk about this book deal so he gets this book deal he's uh went straight to number one on amazon which you could do to the seduction of Anita sarkeesian if you wanted uh if enough people went out there and did it but but i digress uh he went straight to the top of number one uh, of amazon straight to the top of the charts uh, on, on a pre-order the book doesn't even exist yet and it was a, for hard, a hardback cover, $26 each. That's fucking pricey. And boom, straight to the top. And everyone just hand-wringing about it. And, yeah, yeah, how dare you? How dare you? We, we went into this on the last show. You know, like, these are legitimate Nazi. He's not a fucking Nazi. He's half Jewish, for fuck's sake. He's a white supremacist. He sucks black dick. I I don't know what else to say here. If he is a white supremacist, he's really got, he's got the manual upside down, hasn't he? You know what I mean? So I fuck black people. No, you kill black people, you idiot. Fuck. God. Bloody hell. I've only got, I've been biting the pillow for nothing. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Because he's a bottom as well. So any weird fucked up because I had to put oh you can fuck people and hate them yeah all right yeah I was in a relationship for five years you're not wrong but the point <laughs> 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 but the point is it doesn't apply to him he's not racist he's not fucking racist let alone a white supremacist 
So everyone's gone fucking mad. And in particular, the iPaper, right? Which is like a spin-off news digest run by the people who run the independent. Uh, they've really been going hard at it, man. So first up, December 30th, way back in 2016, Sam, if you can cast your mind back, David Leversley, just have a look at this cunt, right? He's your archetypal goony beard, man. <laughs> He's got fucking male feminist written all over his forehead, which used to have cunt written on it, but he crossed that out because it was offensive to women. Just have a look at him, man. So you know straight away what the tone of the article is going to be. And it goes, people are taking action after far-right darling Milo Yiannopoulos got a $250,000 book deal. Milo Yiannopoulos, the technology editor for the far-right website Breitbart, has reportedly struck a quarter of a million dollar book deal with publisher Simon & Schuster. Now critics of the highly divisive conservative personality, including members of the publishing industry, have called on people to pressure the publisher into cancelling the project, which they say is dangerous and incredibly reckless. Right. Let that just sink in. There's, there's a lot of madness in this next section of the show. People, you're going to see how fucking far we've gone that all of those books, you know, pick your poison. Do you want 1984? Do you want fucking Fahrenheit 451? Whatever. Pick a dystopian novel. We're burning books. We don't want certain opinions to be consigned to paper for reasons that are beyond me. The book hasn't even been written. The assumption is that it's going to be some sort of manifesto, the kind of nonsense that Anders Breivik wrote before he went and killed a bunch of people. It's, you know, it's not. It's more likely to just be a sort of uh, partial memoir talking about his tour that he's been on and a few other things. It's really not going to be a dangerous book. He's calling it dangerous. The title is ironic. You, the lunatic left, think his opinion is dangerous. It's not. It's words. Sounds come out of his mouth, much like the Death Bowls team, mass psychosis. Ah. Right? The words come out, the sounds hover, and then they evaporate. And that's it. They're gone. They're done. No one gets hurt. So, this guy, uh, who is Yiannopoulos? Yiannopoulos, a supporter of Donald Trump and spokesperson for the far-right movement known as the alt-right, has previously claimed he was to write books, but they have never emerged. So, we'll get into that, because I'll mention that in the interests of being fair and balanced. Um, he's a spokesperson for the alt-right. What's wrong with his picture, Sam? The alt right isn't a real thing. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, okay, cool, good, good. <laughs> That's extra credit. Is what's wrong with it? And I, I've got a link to Heat Street here because they just wrote it down. But do you remember that awful fucking interview he did with that when Kathy Newman just shouted at him? Yeah, yeah. Because obviously the briefing was he's he's a terrible racist man, so don't listen to anything he's got to say. Oh, but I'm an interviewer. Shouldn't I at least ask him some probing? No, just shout over the top of him, and everyone will say you did a great job. Uh, and when in actual fact, what you've done is the nadir of interview journalism. So in that in that interview, she kept trying to throw this alt right thing at him. And you remember, I said it on this show. Anybody who embraces the label alt-right is a fucking idiot because that is going to become the next term for Nazi. They know. The left know. They've called everyone Nazis now and the term Nazi is getting played out. So now they need something new. So they've invented alt-right and some fucking morons are, em are embracing this. Maybe it even organically came. 
from the people who want to use 4chan and identify as conservatives, but not mainstream old white conservatives, right? Maybe it did come from you organically. It's been appropriated. It now means you are a Nazi or a white supremacist. That's what the mainstream media are going to report. If you self-identify as alt-right at this point, you are playing their game. Reject the term. It's not real. This, in the same way that they tried to make out that Gamergate was a hierarchical structure with leaders, and it was organized despite no evidence ever, and I mean ever, surfacing that that was the case. That's what they're trying to do with the alt right now. And they'll get a few little videos of the occasional idiot doing a fucking Nazi salute, which they're doing for shock value and nothing more. And they'll say, well, look, there's the alt-right. That's what the alt-right do. So don't self-identify as the alt-fucking-right. Because I told you, this is what they're going to do. So here's the problem with saying he's the spokesperson for the alt-right. Milo has said multiple times he doesn't identify as alt-right. He doesn't belong to the alt-right. He, he's got no interest in it. And he said it in that interview. When Kathy Newman let him get a fucking word in, of course. So, Kathy Newman described him as a cheerleader for the alt-right. And uh, he said, no, the media is desperate to crown me the queen of it. That's the alt-right movement. All I've ever done as a reporter is give them a fair hearing. Give them a fair crack of the whip in the press. For that crime, I've been called all sorts of awful names. He added, we are fellow travelers on some issues. But I'm very pro-Iraq. I'm very pro-Israel. There are all sorts of points of difference, I think. So he rejects the whole alt-right thing. So why? Why does this persist? I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. He's never said anything that could be considered white supremacist in nature. Never. Not once. Go find it. It doesn't exist. If it existed, it's all we would hear about. And yet, you know, they're gonna they're gonna sm they smear him with that every fucking day. So to s now they're saying he's a spokesperson for the alt right. How fucking can this guy have a job? How can he have a job? How is he a spokesperson for the alt right when he openly says, "I reject them. I, I've got no interest in it." We, we, we walk a little bit of the same road, but actually there's loads of points of difference. So and just, just to get back to the thing, uh, the, the books that he wrote, there was, um, th there was like a book that he did with uh, poetry that came out. And I remember this from way back when. And I've even seen a copy of it, I think, in, um, in his house when, we, when we've had lunch together and stuff. And he finds it all a bit funny. But there was some Tori Amos lyrics in some of his poems or something, which is a little bit embarrassing. But I think he wrote it, um, it was a long, long time ago and, yeah, whatever. It doesn't excuse it, but people are trying to make out once again that it's like, oh, bloody hell, he's a plagiarist. It's, yeah, there was some original stuff in there. But I, I think it's fair to say poetry, perhaps not his strong suit, you know? It goes on, and it says that he instigated a racist hate campaign against your favorite actress, Sam, Les Dog. Yeah, definitely my favorite actress. You love her, mate? Yeah, definitely. You mate, well, what, was, what was that favorite Saturday Night Live sketch where she was trying to bite that guy? You loved that. Oh, yeah, classic, classic banter. Right? So, shortlisted for Time Person of the Year, of course. Um, so he instigated a racist hate campaign against the Ghostbusters actress and got banned from the Twitter platform. Now, if I said to you, Sam, I have instigated a racist hate campaign against someone, you would probably, um, think that what I did was said, you know, fuck this uh, black person. Uh, let's get him. Let's fuck them up. Obviously, Milo didn't do that. Uh, what, what he did was he wrote a scathing review of the new Ghostbusters film, which is, by the way, a piece of shit, a massive piece of shit. It is garbage. 
It is garbage by blockbuster movie standards. He wrote this uh, review about it, tweeted it out, and then they had a, a brief exchange on Twitter, and Milo said um, two things. The first was rejected by another black dude after she said she didn't want anything to do with him. And um, she misspelled some words in her tweet. And he said, it's really the American education system is really shocking. And that was it. He didn't tell anyone to get her. He didn't say anything racist about her. Now, that doesn't mean other people didn't. But he's not responsible for that. And he certainly didn't instigate a fucking racist hate campaign. And then... Which I find interesting that David Leversley is talking about, you know, um, how the, the, that people are taking action against it. What a veiled way to give a fucking platform to somebody that's trying to organize a boycott and pressure uh, the publisher. He may as well have just wrote an article. He may as well have just said, I want you to do this because that's literally right. Think about the logic here. He is saying that Milo writing a negative review and say making a joke calling Leslie Jones a black dude is instigating a racist hate campaign. Well, in that case, you have thrown away your journalistic impartiality, Mr. Leversley, uh, by because you've given a platform to someone trying to arrange a boycott of a book. So that must be your position, the position of the publication that you write for. And actually, we know it is. But why, you know, why, how, how is it okay for you to give a platform to these people? But Milo is instigating something if he tweets about something. But if you write something heavily slanted, heavily biased, full of factual inaccuracies, it's okay, actually. It's fair game. It's journalism. So he even publishes this lunatic Joe Berkowitz who says, uh, look, at, look at this. Uh, if you want to email the publisher who oversees a Simon & Schuster imprint putting out the book, it's Louise Burke. At simonandschuster.com. So how's he not organizing harassment of a woman? He's, he's named one person out of a company. And obviously, she's not the only person involved in a decision, right? She's not the only person who's like, yeah, well, all right, well, I've decided uh, we're going to put Milo's book. Obviously, there's a, there's a committee involved. Loads of people have been involved with the process. And this guy's saying, definitely email her. Definitely give her a hard time. And here's her name, by the way. So don't email just this random company email. Email her specifically. You know, it wasn't enough to just depart the publicity address. And it even says, if you know any buyers at Barnes & Noble, get them mad. So he's trying to stop the book being sold in stores. So, and apparently this is all fair game because Schuster are giving a legit platform for neo-Nazis. Hey, oh. It's mad. The Chicago Review of Books also weighed in, Sam. They said it was a disgusting validation of hate. And as a result, the Chicago Review of Books, by the way, you got problems of your own over in Chicago. Just saying. Yeah. Fuck the books. Let's get some shields. <laughs> yeah. Right? The Chicago Review of Books has said they will not review any books by threshold editions. That's it. No reviews, no write-ups, no nothing. So all the other writers that don't even know Milo might not subscribe to his politics, which aren't a problem anyway. They all get fucked as well. They lose exposure. And that's how they operate. If you stand, you don't even have to stand with somebody. It's like you've just got to be in the same queue, you know? Like, it's so unbelievable. But it didn't stop there. On they fucking go. Uh, and they did it again. So you've, you made your point there. I news. Now, what is it about fucking leftists and social justice warriors? They always have this like same phrase. You know, we've talked about this a lot on the show. Literally shaking and all this. There's the other one. Here's how you spot a cunt, a fucking mile off. Like a, a vacuous fucking moron. People have nothing to say. If they ever start a sentence with, we need to talk about. If they say that, 
What they mean is I need to sermonize and proselytize to you about something I feel passionate about. That's what it means. That's all it's ever meant. We need to talk about. No, we don't, actually. I'm all right. We don't need to talk about shit, Alice fucking Jones. We don't need to talk about anything. So this is a, an opinion piece, I suppose. And just look at some of this stuff. Again, same lies. He's the darling of the alt-right. Okay? You may not have heard of Yiannopoulos, in which case, congratulations. He is that most modern and empty of phenomena. I guess we all can't be some fucking bit part shit fucking writer at a newspaper that is the basically the broadsheet equivalent of a tabloid. And just click on her name. Have a look at some of the articles she's written, right? She's got the nerve to say that this guy's an empty phenomenon. He's done nothing of any value. Okay, well, let's have a look at some of your work, yeah? What about this? Absolute classic fucking articles. The five best alternative Christmas pantos. This is the big one. Paul O'Grady plays the wicked stepmother and Julian Clary Dandini in Cinderella. That's what you're writing about, is it? That's what you're doing with your life. You want to talk about what's empty? Fuck you. You fucking clown. Have a look at yourself. Prince Harry is the royal we all need. Yeah, well, glad to see you're producing high quality work that's worth talking about. How do these people fucking sleep? I write about absolute fucking garbage. For money. And I'm going to call anyone else that I don't like empty and vacuous and pointless. So again, post the boy for the alt-right. Free speech advocate or troll. And again, uh, they t tie him in with Steve Bannon, who is uh, obviously Trump's chief strategist now. And now the book deal. And then, uh, and look, she says here that um, right at the end, a real danger. We need to talk about Yiannopoulos, not as has become the worrying way, as a purveyor of some kind of aspirational alt-right lifestyle, complete with glamorous clothes, cars, and associates. Not as Nigel Farage, but with better hair, as one fangless newspaper profile recently pegged him, but as a part of a dangerous new establishment that has used its outsider status to build a large, angry following. He is essentially a ridiculous figure, but the views he has articulated have been taken up with gusto. The genie is out of the bottle. Unbelievable, isn't it? Like, what is this guy? When did this guy become like some fucking Bond supervillain? I, 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 I missed it. He's just a fucking guy who works over at Breitbart, writes the occasional funny fucking column, and is is great on stage telling anecdotes and stories and has a good mind for uh, pointing out the hypocrisy of the left. He's a contrarian. He's a provocateur. What's the problem? When did they become the worst thing you could be? I don't understand it. Anyway, you're gonna like the next. You're gonna like the next section, Sam. You, you've been quiet. You're probably you're reading the Anita Sarkeesian book, aren't you? <laughs> no, no, I was just letting you go, man. Thanks, thanks. Right, well, I'm. I'm all right. I'm done now. Let's finish my coffee. You can come back in the room. People don't come here to listen to me talk about my law. They come here to listen to you, mate. I see it in the comments all the time on the YouTube channel. Like, oh, we need more Sam. Where's Sam been? Yeah, and then when I talk, no he's Sam just fucking part. retard background talk, and he doesn't even know anything. So. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you know. That's, that's Swings around mate. boats. Yeah, nature of the beast. So, you're going to like this bit, because we're going to talk about nonsense. <laughs> so. Hey, I couldn't believe this. Like, the nerve of this guy. So, well, someone linked me Facebook. to this and said something along the lines of, have you seen this? <laughs> right? And I was like, okay. 
<laughs> I looked at it, and I can't tell if they were linking it to me because they were outraged or linking it to me because they thought it was fucking hilarious. I, I still don't know. But a, a Spokane man has said that he is a victim of ageism because he got banned from Starbucks for hitting on a teen barista. Now, let's, this is unbelievable, this story. So the man, who we will not identify due to the fact he has not been charged with a crime, said he was at Starbucks and he wrote a note asking out a barista who worked there. And she's 16 years old, mate. And he's 37. Now, at first, I'm like, well, maybe he thought she was older. Yeah. And it's an innocent mistake. But he put a note up on Facebook, mate. And he may as well have said, I am a nonce. Lock me up before I do something. <laughs> Because this is unbelievable. I was flirted with by a barista. For some reason, she thought I was funny. She said I was funny. So I gave her a note to see if she'd be interested in dinner. He said he went into the same Starbucks the next day. And a police officer told him he was banned from that location. Apparently, Starbucks management thought something in the note was inappropriate enough to get the police involved. So I don't even know what was in the note. We don't know that yet. It might have been like that scene in fucking Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas where he just fucking writes backdoor beauty question mark <laughs> on, a, on a piece of paper and slides it across to the waitress. And when asked what, what that means, he said, it's the name of a racehorse I own. <laughs> I know the female Starbucks barista was of legal age to date. Yeah, I mean, that might be true in Washington, right? 16's not true in every state, though, in America. I broke no laws. I merely took a chance with my heart. I'm tired of hearing the word creep. Right, This is where he goes off, mate. As any black person or gay person is tired of hearing certain words, I have a whole web page dedicated to age gap love. And lock him up. And, <laughs> and, it's, and it's time. Like, if you were the guy's <laughs> lawyer, you're like, okay, all right, all right. He's comparing being a 37, lecturing on a 16-year-old to, to racial abuse and homophobia. And he's just said he's got a website dedicated to age gap love. Age gap love? Nonsense, we called it, mate. <laughs> yeah, nonsense. That's what we call it in the in the UK. And then he said he was being discriminated against because of his age. I mean, look, right? If it's legal, yeah. And if they're both happy with it, yeah. But there is something wrong, I would say, with a thirty-seven-year-old seeking out the company of sixteen-year-olds. Correct, Mundo. You know, a few more years. <laughs> Like, is that too much to ask? Like, 20 or something? Like, bro, 16? I don't know. But here's the thing. I keep telling you this. It's no wonder he's talking about how, you know, it's age gap love and I'm being discriminated against. Because the left, the way the wind's blowing, air, they're straight embracing nonsense, man. They're embracing it. They're embracing it, mate. Um, Salon published, you know, we, again, I'm sure we've talked about this on previous shows. Salon published a number of articles saying that, oh, you fucking, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm a paedophile, not a monster. Well, yeah. <laughs> kind of hard, or like. Yeah, just you know. Here's the thing, though. If I, I've seen people make this argument to me, right, and they go, "Yeah, you know, as long as they don't molest kids, all right, then." Let's put it to the test. When you have kids, let this cunt look after them. No problem, right? It's no problem. He's not. Even if he doesn't do anything, you're happy that he sat there in a room thinking about it. Oh, come on, there's got to be some fucking standards, mate. 
There's got to be some standards. That's all I want. Standards, just some standards. Like, look, obviously, I mean, well, first of all, let's just talk about the term virtuous paedophiles. You heard that? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's like where you pledge you'll never molest a kid. Yeah, which I suppose. Yeah, like great. All right, but <laughs> not great. <laughs> yeah, not, you know not what I mean? ideal. Like, yeah, it's not ideal. That's the that's the thing. It's not ideal, but it's better than the fucking alternative. But you still need fucking serious help. And if you can never get over the hump, you would probably need to be institutionalized in case you crack. You know, yeah, I, I, it's not like the whole thing of being faithful is that you can't resist. Well, I don't know. But the point, <laughs> like, yes, yeah. like... uh, come on, Rich, like, get what's it like? Oh, well, I think it's Sam. You know, it's I don't know, mate. I couldn't tell you. But here's the thing: like, obviously, if you've got a, any sexual compulsion or a paraphilia, you know, it's like people who are compelled to fuck horses. Why do they do it? I don't know. They obviously want to. They obviously do it one day. And there are probably some people who want to fuck animals and they never get around to fucking animals. But here's the thing: like, it, you know, you, if you if you're thinking that way. You're fucking demented. Seriously, I'm being serious. I, like, I'm sympathetic. It must be torturous for you, but ultimately, come on, you know it's fucking not on. Like, <laughs> it's not on. part of your brain knows. It's not on, like, and you can say it all you want. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. But what you are you gonna do? You're gonna look at pictures. You're gonna think those thoughts. What if one day you have one too many drinks and that virtue, you know, the virtue? Such a fucked up word to use for it. I agree not to commit one of the most heinous crimes imaginable. Oh, aren't you a good guy? You're so <laughs> virtuous. <laughs> oh. It's ridiculous. It's it's fucking absurd. That that's the absurdity we live in right now. Like I just want to draw a line. Here's where I want to draw the line. You know, I'm for all for freedom of expression. I'm all for tolerance and acceptance and understanding. And I want us to work through, uh, you, know, you know, if you've got emotional problems and, and problems that make you the, 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 a victim as well. And, and, and uh, But nonsense, come on. I've seen people compare it to the fucking black civil rights movement in some of these publications. The fuck? Yeah. Saying that paedophiles are persecuted. Yeah, they are. Like, <laughs> yeah, because generally everyone <laughs> in society nonsense. has a natural instinct to want to protect a child. If you don't have that instinct, you're fucked. You are wrong. You are broken. And you're not fit <laughs> to be in society. Because... The whole measure of a society is how we treat the most vulnerable. And the most vulnerable are children. Yes, we fail lots of other people. But generally, when it comes to kids, we get it right. So I can't get on board with this. I can't. Maybe maybe I am the mentally ill one. But I don't think I am. I think the vast majority of people aren't one day, like 20 years from now, going to look back and go, bloody hell, do you remember when we used to persecute pedos? Weren't we barbarians? I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think generally, for the most part, we're going to accept that if you are a paedophile, you are fucked. Right? And that's it. Whether you do it, you know, and yes, all right, not doing something and just having your sick little fucking fantasies in your head, it's definitely preferable with the alternative, but please go put yourself in a home or something. Just, just check yourself in. Just go check yourself in. I don't want you to write an article for Salon. I want you to go to an institution and start taking the fucking pills. I'm sorry if that makes me old-fashioned and a dinosaur. But anyway, with that in mind... Don't phobe. I know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pedo <laughs> Hey, With that in mind, it's, you know, it's 2017. Happy New Year. 2016 was the year social justice was exposed as ridiculous. They've devoured themselves. The left have devoured themselves. So here we go. Let's do it. Let's, uh, let's, let's have this fresh start. Cracked. 
I remember when Cracked used to write, you know, just funny articles about alternative culture and lifestyle. Cracked used to be worth reading. Hasn't been for a long time. Today, they publish an article. Oh, Sam, 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 Sam. <laughs> what is this? Five things I learned from being addicted to child porn. First off, just look at that picture, mate. <laughs> Don't it turn your fucking stomach? Look at the beard, like. Yeah, just uh, like. <sighs> Uh, kids, like, <laughs> come on, that's getting cut it? for the rest of your career. Yeah, that's a may <laughs> may. <laughs> kids, right. who does that? Though? Whoever does that? Let's just move away from this for a second, right? When you're watching something on. You fucking monitor, right? Something you really like. I don't know. Let's say uh, with me, it's porn. With you, you're on Just Eat. You know, for <laughs> a pub. Yeah. All right. All right. Don't pretend you have interests outside of food. So. <laughs> you know, you're a two dimensional figure. So, you know, have you ever done this? Have you ever. You've ever mouth breathed while yeah. lying? Like, you need have, to be put have down. ever literally, like, got closer to the fucking screen and, like, with. Tobacco yellow thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. You you are literally yeah, just full craving the fucking ring. Like. <laughs> ring wraith. Yeah, you have become a ring wraith. Like, who's got <laughs> sniffing? <laughs> has anyone ever done that? Ever? Yes. So what is that picture about? This is meant to be a serious topic, by the way. But but here's the thing I really hate about this article, which is grotesque. Um, because obviously as well, right? This is an anonymous article, so this guy is looking at, at at child porn, and I'm guessing based on the article, he's like, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it sounds like, but just, whatever. It just sounds <laughs> like he. It I'm doesn't really sound like. Word. It's worth it. It just, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like it's not like a redemptive article. It's not like, you know, I went to jail and um, I got fixed and, you know, fucked up. God, I'm disgusted by myself or whatever. Like, they're framing it as an addiction. Again, you're not addicted. You're fucking demented. You, you gotta, you know. And look, a pedophile is someone attracted to prepubescent children. While a child molester is someone who sexually abuses them. Well, you can't have one without the other, by the way, mate. I mean, unless child molesters don't like doing it. Uh, what are you trying to say here? I hate this way they create this fucking distinction. And I know there's a distinction in some uh, countries when it comes to law. I think in America, you have a pedophile and a pederast. And a pederast is someone who acts on the compulsions. But what they're trying to do in the media at the moment is they're really trying to create this distinction that it's okay to look as long as you don't touch. Well, it's fucking not, by the way. You, when you create that fucking desire, uh, that, that requirement for that fucking filth to fucking exist, you're actually playing an active part in the abuse of kids, whether you want to fucking acknowledge it or not. So look, although not every paedophile will molest a child, most of them will look at child pornography, which obviously hurts the children forced to participate in it. Unfortunately, demand is high. Is it? It's fucking not, mate. It's definitely not high. Like, uh, uh, do you know what I mean? What fucking world? Uh, talk about like, normalizing it. Demand is high. It's not, though. It's fucking not. You have to be a proper sick cunt. You have to go seek it out. It's not like it's just lying there on the internet. You just type in Google, ah, sexy naked kids, bing. It just doesn't work like that, right? Like, you act, you have to fucking actively go on, like, the deep web, talk to other nonces, get into private <laughs> forums. You, know. you have to network to become a nonce. You have to be a networking nonce. Yeah. 
So to understand this problem better, we reached out to one of the consumers. We spoke to Charlie, who's been arrested twice for possession of child pornography. He's not looking for sympathy or trying to play the victim. Just as well, mate. <laughs> so anyway, five things I learned from being addicted to child porn. And it, it says, it, it talks about a lot of it like it's just normal everyday porn. Uh talks about you know how prison's not a deterrent uh you can get addicted to it uh you starts as a kid da, 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 da. but that's what worries me is again this weird normalization of it something that's clearly not normal uh, yeah it's just fucking gross really gross Just reading some of this. I mean, just look at this. Like, look at this. The first time I was designated as a level two sex offender, but there were arguments to be made for being a level one, where I wouldn't be on the registry for the public. The one that pushed me to a level two was the fact that I did not know any of the victims in the pictures, so I got twenty points instead of ten, because somehow it would have been better if I knew the victims in the random pictures I was downloading. What the fuck? Uh, geez. And, and look, and then, then they start spinning it like like it's some sort of fucking, like that fucker Make on that murderer. Netflix. Yeah, yeah like, like, you know, like... Although, no one although is Charlie is a nonce. <laughs> no one is disputing that Charlie is guilty, but level two of the sex offender registry is usually reserved for people with multiple offences and or substance abuse problems that might contribute to them reoffending. That's why Charlie tried to find it. Fuck Charlie! I don't care if he... <laughs> what the fuck? The fact he's named himself Charlie. You just said he's not playing the victim. Well. well, like, I'm sympath... Oh, well, how can we get Charlie back to level one of the nonce <laughs> register? Like, how? How? Tell me how, like... I'm not going to be able to sleep, Sam. How do we get Charlie to be in a level one nonce? What the fuck is going on? What planet am I living on? It's unbelievable. Like, what are crack doing? What are they thinking? You know, I'm amazed it doesn't end with a fucking, uh, you know, like one of them fucking what are they call petitions. Oh, go fund me. <laughs> yeah. Go nonce me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Non starter. What what even is this last line? God, this is giving me a brain tumor, Sam. Just right, look at this last line. Uh they're talking about rehabilitation. And the last paragraph is Will this be enough to make Charlie stop watching child porn for good? Or is it already too late for him? Are your kids in danger of ending up like him? Science says, we have no idea, and this feels gross to talk about. How about lasers instead? Pew, pew, zap. <laughs> Man, Leo. I mean... Is the is the guy who wrote this article? Has he got no fucking shame? You know why? Why would you include that at the end? You've just interviewed a fucking child sex offender, and you think a suitable way to set the tone is talk about lasers instead, pew pew zap, and then of course. <clears throat> Charlie's just a man trying to make up for some of the wrongs he's done in his life. He hopes his experiences might inspire someone to get help if they find themselves in the same situation he was in. If you do find yourself in a similar situation, then please get help. If you're a parent and worried about protecting your child online, here's a link with some information on how to keep your children safe online. Pew pew zap! It's fucking mental, mate. The world's gone to shit. I never thought I'd be sat here, still a young man in my mind, literally saying, sounding like my granddad, 
We're going to hell in a handbasket, Sam. These nonces are taking over the world. Pew pew zap, mate. Ageism. Age gap love. Nambler. <laughs> World's fucking losing it. Right. Do you know Ariana Grande? I, I know Ariana Grande. Yeah. She's Ariana Grande to me. I'm not. She hasn't got an accent over the E. Ariana so she, Grande. The E is silent. If you've got... The, anyway, whatever. Ariana Grande, as she likes to be called. So... She, um... The, the, she she put, like did a little type-up uh, about how she'd been objectified. <laughs> you probably see where I'm going with this. I'm still got that cracked article ticking over on my brain, thinking, should we really be jumping from the cracked article <laughs> <laughs> to this? Probably, I don't even. Who gives a fuck? This show's garbage. So, Ariana Grande went on uh, to the internet to talk about how horrible it was that she'd been objectified, and she, the example she gave of being objectified, was. Uh, a fan told her rapper boyfriend that he uh, he complimented him for hitting that. And she said, I felt sick and objectified. Things like this happen all the time and are the kind of moments that contribute to women's sense of fear and inadequacy. I'm not a piece of meat that a man gets to utilize for his pleasure. I'm an adult human being in a relationship with a man who treats me with love and respect. Now, I, Sam, you know where I stand on this. I hate the objectification of women. But i got to say, if you make a career out of effectively objectifying yourself and marketing yourself as a sex object, should you really be surprised if people view you that way? It's a it's a philosophical question. You can you can answer. Yeah, well, I thought this as well, but I was too scared to answer because I know you just get wrecked, though, so I didn't even bother. But what do you think, Sam? Tell me your real views. Oh, well, obviously, if you mark yourself mate. as a sex object and then you can't just mad surprise, why does everyone want to have sex with me all the time? It was classic, what you built your brand on. Yeah, and Ariana Grande... She went on to, to say as well, women expressing sexuality is often mistaken for high come disrespect me. And that's just not the case. And it definitely, uh, definitely isn't. You're absolutely right. I couldn't agree more. I think there's lots of examples of women in music that have expressed themselves uh, sexually and express their sexuality without ever really being treated like a sex object, honestly. Uh, and they've done it in some quite clever ways. I mean, you know, I grew up with Madonna, which a lot of people, you know, they'll probably look back and they'll laugh at some of the shit she did. But it was it was probably in a in a context of the history of music, it was probably a big deal. You know, it was probably revolutionary for a lot of women. <clears throat> and I don't remember, you know, she even put a, a coffee book out. I think it was just called Sex. And there was all bondage pictures in it and shit, and it caused a big brouhaha at the time. I was just a little kid. Um, but, you know, I don't remember anybody, you know, objectifying her. Because it was done in a, you know, clever way. Or, or, a, or a cleverer way. Now... I want to put this in context because you're probably wondering where I'm going with this. Do you, have you listened to any of her songs? Uh, yeah, I've heard a few. Right. Well, wh which ones? Oh, fuck. I don't know what they're called. Um, Come on. Sing them. Hang on. Let me look up the name of them and then I'll probably remember. Um... <laughs> um... The 
Yay! I recognise that one. No, right. no, focus, focus. Okay. That's one. Well, how does that one go? Can I just What's play it? <laughs> oh, just, give me, give me just some words in it. Focus on me. Okay. Focus on me. It does that? There you go. That's good. All right, cool. Yeah, that rings a bell. <laughs> It does it though. Yeah, it does. It does. Well, it does. the song, the song I want to talk about uh, is is the masterpiece "Side to Side." Right. You ever heard that one? Maybe. Can I have a listen if you want? I'm gonna get wrecked by copyright though. No, no, no. I mean, just yeah, just have a private listen. <laughs> but right. um, it's got Nicki Minaj in it, whose yeah. name I will pronounce properly. Uh. And you know, side to side, right? It's it's an innocuous title. Do you know what the song's about? No. Well, she gets. I am what the kids might call fucked by a dude, uh, and and it, they're going at it for so long. He's got to walk in side to side. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm being John Wayne. Yeah, John Wayne. She's having a John Wayne. <laughs> she's got the gap. <laughs> but I'm guessing calling the song "Got the Gap." You know, she's probably she's got the yeah. gap. But don't bow. Somebody slap this. Right. So I- I'm going to read you some of the lyrics here. Um. Right. Let me think. Uh. Because right. Well, it opens up. I've been here. I've been here all night. I've been here all day. And boy, got me walking side to side. Let them hoes know. So I'm talking to you. See you standing over there with your body, feeling <laughs> like I want to rock with your body. And we don't gotta think about nothing. I'm coming at you because I know you got a bad reputation. Doesn't matter because you give me temptation. And we don't gotta think about nothing. These friends keep talking way too much. Say I should give you up. Can't hear them, no, because I. I've been here all night. I've been here all day. And boy got me walking side to side. <laughs> right? <laughs> I feel now, so old. I just feel like, isn't music nowadays shit? <laughs> like, no, no, I do music feel like I'm 90. Shit. Like, music, music was good shit. back in my day. Right. That is so shit, Look, isn't it? <laughs> and when asked about this, there was an interview with MTV News reporter Gabby Wilson, and uh, she she said, like, what is Side to Side about? And Ariana said, the song is about, this is literally the quote, riding leading to soreness. Right? <laughs> okay, but, but here's the thing. When Nicki Minaj comes in, she says... This the new style with the fresh type of flow. Wrist icicle, ride dick bicycle. <laughs> Come through, yo. Get you this type of blow. If you want a menage, I got a tricycle. And I got to say, one thing, I, I like Nicki Minaj, but I'm getting a little bit bored of the fact that she knows that menage and menage a trois kind of sound yeah, a little bit the same. Getting a bit bored of that now. Like You, you do do it in every song, love. If we just... We, we get it. It's real. Fu- it's good. It was good. I'm pretty sure. What was that one where she says, and you can eat my ass like a cupcake? What I song's that remember. in? That's classic band there. Yeah. <laughs> classic <that>. lyrics. <laughs> classic lyrics. I like that one. I definitely would eat her ass like a cupcake. No doubt about it. She, she's, love it. Love the imagery. <laughs> Great stuff. She uses the menage a trois joke in there as well. Brilliant. It's genius. By now, yeah, menage, tricycle, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me, let me see. I see. I don't understand. Cause like Nicki Minaj, she kind of goes off a little bit in this. So I don't think she understands like the wrist icicle ride dick bicycle line that really ties the song together, you know, about getting fucked and, and it being sore in the morning and you're walking side to side. It's great stuff. Um, but, but Nicki Minaj does a verse. I, I just don't think she really understood what Ariana was trying to do. You know, because she says, all these bitches flows is my mini me body smoking. So they call me young Nikki chimney rappers in their feelings because they feel in me. 
I give zero fucks and I got zero chill in me. Kissing me cop the blue box that say Tiffany. Curry with the shot, just tell him to call me Stephanie. Gun pop and I make my gum pop. I'm the queen of rap, young Ariana run pop. But what's that got to do with the dick bicycle? <laughs> you know? It's just gone too far, isn't she? Yeah, she's just lost it. Like she just, She's just gone off, like. And not in a good way. You know, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. She just, you know, it's like, I, I can imagine, like, you know, Ariana's like, yeah, great, great verse, Nikki. Fuck, you know. <laughs> I know. Why, why wasn't she talking more about the, uh, the, the bloody. She stole my fucking dick bicycle line. <laughs> So, and then it, it ends with, uh, again, you, you got me um, walking side to side uh, and wrist icicle, ride dick bicycle, ends with Nicki Minaj. So, I guess the point I'm trying to make here, Sam, is, right, could, could somebody be forgiven? Maybe. Oh, oh, by the way, have you seen the video? No. Just just look at it now, I'll wait. Well the music video for that song. Yeah. Side to side music video. Just just type it in. And just watch Adno. The first fifteen seconds I think should be sufficient. You'll you, you'll notice No, 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 no. Okay. No, let's not do that again. Copyright. Um but let's just um just just watch the movement. Okay, I'll watch it. And and oh, uh, she's on an exercise bike, yeah. you see? Yeah, are you, are you watching that? <laughs> yeah. You ever seen anyone in a gym ride an exercise bike like that? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, me either. It's almost as if she wanted us to imagine she was doing something else. It's almost as if she was objectifying herself, Sam. Weird, that. It's weird, isn't it? So, you know, just saying. Don't. Don't pretend what you're doing is fucking high art, okay? You've literally written a song about getting railed so hard you're fucking sore in the morning and have to gape John Wayne crab scuttle your way out of the house. You've d recorded a video where you are literally on an exercise bike giving it the time of its fucking life. And, what well, you if I, if I talk about you being in any way related to sex, I'm the fucking, you know, I, I fucked up. I missed the point. Come on, fuck no. That's ridiculous. You turn yourself into a sex object and some fucking losers are going to talk that way. That's how it is. That's all they got, by the way. That's the only reason they listen to your music. They don't think it's good. Newsflash, because it ain't. You know, but they're like, oh, please, please, God. You know about that, Sam. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, don't what, I don't know what to say on that one. Yeah, you've been smoking fucking... <laughs> yeah, you've been muted, haven't you? No. You've been dropping bong hits. Like, you've been barely here, man. <laughs> Everlasting bong hit, man. <laughs> My longest bong hit ever. Yeah, yeah boy. boy. Um, so let's kill the show there. I think that's a good note to end on. Yep. It's been a bit of a mess, really, hasn't it? Yeah, We've had the seduction kind of, of a mess. Yeah, I, I, I like doing shows like this. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. You know, I was, I, I've seen again. We've had, we've had some mentally ill people tweeting at me. I want to bloody talk about esports. Some, nah, you're all right, mate. Esports is so <laughs> fucking played out for me. I've done it for twelve years. Let's talk about fucking Nicki Minaj's dick bicycle. All right, let's talk about that. I'm more interested in that right now. Sorry. Day job starts up again soon. I've got to go to Vegas and uh, talk about esports there. So um, it's nice to it's nice to have an outlet. I'm sure people enjoy it, dude. This is the perfect thing. You yeah. stick it on your iPhone, your iPod, your i things, and you go to work. You know, and you just listen to this while you're working. And then after this one, you can listen to the seduction of Anita Sarkeesian. You definitely can, because you can download that and um, and listen to it. Be read by Stephen Hawking. Next feminist pussy.
you do it you do it so well, dude. John Madden. John Madden. John Madden. Football. Football. <laughs> So, uh, any 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 final thoughts? Do, do we need to say anything else for the plug? Are we all good? Uh, just go to rlewisreports.com forward slash TSAS. That's it. Okay. All right. Good job. Great show. Uh, there'll be some other videos in this channel. Uh, obviously, as I said there, I'm going to be in Vegas for a few days at CES, where E-League's going to be on the road, and I'm also going to be in an eSports panel. So I'm going to be predisposed. Uh, I have recorded some videos in advance, so there will be some stuff on the channel. But if there's a couple of days here and me and Sam don't do a podcast for a while, that's why. Uh, but we'll certainly uh, be back into a regular schedule as we have the build-up to the CSGO Major. So as always, thanks for listening to this. We will see you on the next show. And welcome to 2017.